As a lot of you may know, Hasbro has been fighting harder to keep episodes of MLP off of YouTube, which is unfortunately restricting a lot of our fellow Bronies and Pega sisters from viewing the from viewing the full episodes on the site. However, reaction videos are still reaction videos. So please do not come to our videos uh, just using our videos to just watch the episode and not giving a flying buck about our reactions. During a reaction video, you're supposed to stay seated and actually listen to the thoughts. So if you want to watch the full original episode for yourself first, just find somewhere to go watch it for yourself, such as Daily Motion or any other site you can find. Thank you, and enjoy the reaction video. Hello and good evening. I am Mr. Chaos. And obviously it's Saturday, so I'm going to be reacting to uh, MLP Season 6, Episode 23, Where the Apple Lies. So yeah, like I obviously said in my finale reaction, um, other than the, the finales being leaked early, there's two more standard episodes to go. And it's this one and the next one being called Top Bolt. So I'm guessing it's going to be called a... It's going to be a Wonderbolts episode from my best guess, but... Anyway, so this is where the Apple lies. I saw the preview for it from Brony DE a while back, and... Apparently this is supposed to be some kind of memory episode, where Applejack is a little younger. Like, not really fully a filly, but kind of a younger teenager. I mean, this should be interesting. I heard, like, um, the kind of higher pitch voice acting for a younger age, and it sounds pretty cute, actually. I'm actually eager to find out what this episode is really about, so without further ado, let's get started. Alright, starting the episode in 3, 2, 1, start. Well, that's the last of it, filthy rich. Oh. Rich, please. And on behalf of rich oh, so we, so we get to see a filthy rich talk more. Our pleasure. See you next time. Uh, Apple Bloom, did you pack up the cider into the same crates as the Zap Apple Jam? Sure did. Now that I'm getting older, I want to prove I can handle more responsibility on the farm. But <laughs> the crates are good for you, Apple Bloom. You kept track of what went into which crate, right? Oh. Um. um uh, yep. I totally kept track of everything. <laughs> no. Good. Because are you lying, Apple Bloom? Rich to get a shipment of cider when he's supposed to get Zap Apple Jam. You know how Granny feels about selling cider anywhere but on the farm. Are you sure he got the right crates? <laughs> sure, I'm sure. Now, why don't you and Big Mac head on out to the house and let me finish up here? If you gave Rich the Zap Apple Jam, then what's this here? Um. Oh no. <clears throat> nope. Oh, so, wait, is this episode, like, called Where the Apple Lies because uh, Apple Bloom was dishonest? Wait a minute. Wait. Oh, okay, just, um, silencing the theme song for a moment. Um, is this episode going to be about, like, uh, Apple Bloom being kind of taught that lying is wrong by being taken on some nostalgia trip? Uh, through the flashback of Applejack and Big Mac being younger? I don't know, let's just find out. We will never forget Lauren Faust. Granny knows I, I wasn't trying to make off with a shipment of cider, right? Because I would never do that. Don't worry. We know exactly Really, Filthy Rich? Really? Coming from you, Filthy Rich? Now, why in tarnation would you lie to me, Apple? Bloom? I was kind of hoping I could fix it before any pony found out. Telling lies won't fix anything. Trust me. I know. Well, sometimes it does, but mostly not. You've never told a lie in your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So is this where we go into the nostalgia trip now? Oh, sugar cube. <laughs> your big sister lied so much when she was a filly. The whole family <laughs> <laughs> I love the expression on Applejack's face here. She's like, stop embarrassing me, Granny Smith. <laughs> Not even do her some good. Well, 
Jack and Big Mac were just a wee bit older than you are now, they both kept a squabbling over who would run the farm better. All I'm saying is that you may have plenty of brawn, but I'm the one with the ideas on how to run things better around here. <laughs> okay, Applejack looks a little cute in her kind of younger age, actually. I mean, her legs look kind of skinny, but she looks kind of cute. I was just telling Cousin Brayburn last week. Now there's a pony who knows how to put his back into a problem. Uh, oh, hi there, filthy rich. Just rich, please. And I'd like you to... Oh, there's spoiled rich, too. Spoiled milk. Honey, this is... Spoiled milk? Her name is Spoiled Milk? I thought her name was Spoiled Rich. Yeah, whatever. Sweet Apple Acres makes Zap Apple Jam. It's one of Dad's best. Why, why is why is Filthy Rich so nice? Your best sellers. My amazing husband to be is running the Rich family business now. Did you know that? Well, now you do. Why is why is Spoiled Rich a little more? You know, a little more. Why is Spoiled Rich a little more? You know, kind of like a jerk more than um. Filthy riches, like. The corner. Why not let me sell it for you? That is an interesting idea. Well, Wait. Didn't they have a rule about not selling cider uh, except on the farm? Granny told him every year about the tradition of every pony in Ponyville lining up out at Sweet Apple Acres. So yeah, nowhere else. Tradition. Someday, one of y'all take over the farm just like I've taken over the store. I'm guessing it'll be the one with the best ideas. Well, uh, as I've said many a time before, ideas are all well and good, but you can't plow a field. You know what? How about give you three barrels of cider early and if it sells well we'll make a deal for the rest oh, hey, um come on honey i've got to get everything ready Hoo -wee. i tell you if the future means me running sweet apple acres and you being quiet i can't wait i just can't believe you'd make a deal with filthy rich without even talking to granny uh, I don't know about that. Applejack here had another one of her big ideas, and I think we all know my position on ideas. You can't plow a field with them. Right. Big idea. Actually, more of an opportunity. You see, we ran into Filthy Rich in town. Did you know he's running the family store now? And what is this here opportunity mean for Sweet Apple Acres? Well, uh, since cider season is almost here, he, or I mean, I thought it'd be a good idea to give him a few barrels of cider to sell at the store before the season starts. Oh, is it? Uh... Absolutely not! Uh. But Granny, why can't we sell a few barrels of cider early to Filthy Rich? And how is it any different than when you gave Zap Apple Jam to Filthy's Grandpappy to sell? Your cider and your jam ain't the same thing. Zap Apple Jam jars preserve the flavor for moves, but cider starts to spoil the second it comes out the press. That is why every cider season, all of Ponyville lines up at Sweet Apple Acres and first come, first serve. <laughs> I get what you're saying, Granny, but couldn't you make an exception just this once? I sort of promised. Mm -mm. Besides, cider making is iffy business, and we're probably not going to have a lot this year anyway, what with all the blight. Well, I'm sorry, Applejack, but you're just going to have to unpromise. Oh. Uh, so what's she going to do now? No, you don't hate to say anything. Well, I've always thought that the most important thing a pony can do is say exactly what's on his mind to any pony who listens. So every pony everywhere always knows everything you're thinking. And, and you don't ever have to listen to any pony else. 
What? Exactly. Well, if it ain't my new business partner. Uh, about the cider, Rich. Take a look at what I did last night after we made our deal. Oh, uh, no. Pretty great, huh? The thing is, I don't think I can get you any. What? I did all this work on your say-so. We shook hooves and everything. Well, you see, at Sweet Apple Acres, we've always been about quality. And, well, your basic jam jar... Plus, keep... it's been a tough harvest this year. What with all the blights. Oh, sounds to me like you're trying to make excuses. Whenever Granddad dealt with Granny Smith, she kept her word. If you can't do that, then maybe our families should stop doing business together. All together. Now, now, the thing is, Rich, it ain't really up to us. You see, Granny's... Sick! Wait, Granny's sick? I had no idea. Yeah, no pony did. What Big Mac means is uh, we've been trying to keep it quiet. We don't want people to make rash decisions about doing business with Sweet Apple Acres just because we're a, a little short hook. Applejack. Oh, my, of course, of course. I'm so sorry. Please, let me know if there's anything I can do. Much appreciated, but right now, we, we only ask for your understanding during this difficult time. Mm -hmm. You were supposed to tell Rich the simple truth, but instead you made things worse with a giant lie. W w what was I supposed to do? You heard Rich. If I told him the truth, he was going to stop doing business with us altogether. Yeah, but that's only because I, I forgot to ask if we had any oat crumbles for this delicious-looking salad, Granny. You won't. Yeah, I will. Take a look. That was only because you made promises you couldn't keep. But there's got to be a better way out of this mess than by making up some story about Granny being sick. Well, it worked, didn't it? Sorry to drop by unannounced. We just wanted to come by to wish Granny a speedy recovery. Look, sis, our good friend Mr. Rich and his fiancée are here. Oh, and they brought flowers for Granny on account of she is sick, like you said. Ain't that sweet? Uh, excuse me one second. <laughs> Applejack. Eternation. Oh, I'm sorry, Granny. I didn't see you there. You came blasting in so fast, it weren't possible to see nothing. Can you go out to the barn? I, uh, I think we might have left a blight sprayer in the orchard. Are you mad at your apple picking mine? It's supper time, girl! I know, but if we forgot a sprayer, I'd want to get it before dark. You go start counting, and, and I'll tell Big Mac we'll be right back, uh, okay? So from that moment on, I took to referring to myself as big or large or... Oh, Applejack, your brother was just explaining why he always wears his yoke. Even though we asked him how your grand bear is doing. Oh, well, you know how <laughs> that can get to talking. Ah, uh, this is becoming a mess. Now, he's just as worried about Granny Smith as I am. Dear, is she doing that bad? Well, one thing's for sure. She, she shouldn't be seeing any pony right now. Oh, no. I'm getting more upset just thinking about it. Excuse me. What in the frilly Zoopadilla's <laughs> gotten into you? Sorry, Granny. I just decided if I helped you, it would go faster. <laughs> well, you're too late. All the sprayers are here. Oh, good. Uh, say, Granny, when did you first bite the apple blight again? It was my second year here in Ponyville. Uh, they was before I had the rick on the <laughs> Really? <laughs> Sneak away while Granny's trying to tell a story? <laughs> so tall. But to me... <laughs> <laughs> I like the animation of Applejack, like, slowly walking in the background there. <laughs> Granny. Uh, Big Mac didn't want to be rude, but you just can't see Granny right now because she's... Got Apple Blight! <gasps> I thought only trees got the blight. Yeah, that's usually the case. Uh, I just think it's from working in the orchard for so many years. You see, we had to take <laughs> Granny to Ponyville General. We just got back right before you showed up. Oh, my. 
That is terrible. Mm, it's not contagious, is it? Um, I'm yeah, sure I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just in case. You're right. We're gonna have to hurry if we want to get there before visiting hours are over. That's right. Wait, get where? Why, the hospital, of course. I'm sure <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh no. Oh, uh, you see where Long has got you, Applejack? Telling Filthy Rich that Granny's in the hospital just made everything a hundred times worse. What are we supposed to do now? I got it! Drop my second best teeth right in the pig pen, and that was the worst case of Apple Black ice if he ever seen. I'd love to hear more, Granny, but we gotta get to the hospital right away. The hospital? Why? Who said? You are. What he means is you're needed at the hospital. <laughs> Whatever for. It's the apple black. It's starting to infect ponies now. The doctors need an expert opinion, and no ponies uh. about mud and blight than Granny Smith. Well, what tarnation are we waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh oh. Supposed to go in uh, in the back uh, to avoid any pony in the waiting room with the blight. Uh. Oops, I almost forgot. <laughs> this is perfect. And now you don't have to worry about catching the blight. For sure, say so, dearie. Now you wait right here while I uh, check on your presentation. What in the rotten rhubarb is going on here? <laughs> Fancy meeting you two. Ah, oh, oh, that that guy with the kind of the swollen flank there it doesn't look too good. We found you because I can't seem to find Granny's room or any nurses who've even heard about a pony with apple blight. Granny's room. Sure, just go down here, take a left, then a right, go down some stairs, <laughs> more stairs, through the cafeteria. Uh, apple and Jack. Right. Easy as Granny's apple pie. <laughs> Uh, oh, that face. Oh, catch up. I gotta find Big Mac. Okay, Granny, just wait here one second and we can go. Where are you two going? Big Mac can't come. He, uh, he might be contagious. Contagious? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Apple Jack is just taking this all the way. Granny, you're not allowed to take the sheets off. You moan a few times, he leaves, and this whole thing is over. This is spinning way out of control, Applejack. <laughs> exactly, like I just said. Cider in Filthy Store was a good idea, but it ain't worth lying to him about Granny being sick and needing to go to the hospital, or fibbing to Granny about them wanting her to come here to talk about the blight, or... Big McIntyre, please just listen to me for once! This ain't about my ideas. If Rich finds out about all the lies, he'll cut off ties with us and the farm will go under. Now, do you want that to happen, or do you want to help? Why can't you be Granny? You're her size, and this is all your fault in the first place. I would, but if I let you do the talking, you just ramble on and on until we all got caught. Yeah. Just lay down, keep still, and promise me you won't say anything for once in your life. Yep. Wait, so so is this how he became silent? Circles looking for Granny's room. Well, you're in luck, cause it's it's right over here, and this time I'll make sure you don't get lost. <laughs> uh wait. Who's that all who's that all covered? What? Oh, it was Big Mac, okay. He, I mean she was right here. Oh no. We gotta go. Is that Granny Smith? Where are they taking her? <laughs> you two, don't lose that gurney. Granny, what are you doing? You're supposed to stay there. It was a supply closet. Oh, uh, well, okay, come with me, but be quiet. You know, save your voice for the big presentation. <laughs> hey, is that derpy? Like, she has like a blindfold. 
Like, what happened to her? Did she hit her head or something? Oh no. Um. Oh no. Uh, I'm sorry, but you can't get any closer without a gown and mask. But, 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 but that's my brother on there. Don't worry. This is our best doctor. She'll have your brother back on his hooves in no time. <laughs> oh no. Did she say apple blight? Uh, I, she said gasket mites. And once your trunk turns red <coughs> like this, the only thing to do is prove to branch you. Oh, oh no, Granny! What? He prunes them branches? Well, sure. What else you gonna do once the blight gets this big? Uh, oh no. Oh no, oh, wait, what? Wait, amputation in My Little Pony? What? Just stop. This is all a big misunderstanding. Actually, it's a big lie. Be mad? Granny Smith? What is going on here, Applejack? That is a darn good question. <laughs> oh no. I'm not sure if I was worried that no pony was listening to my ideas. Or just nervous that I wouldn't be the one to end up running the farm. But I promised something to Filthy Rich that I couldn't deliver. And I was too embarrassed to admit it. So Granny was never sick? And there ain't no apple blight in ponies? <clears throat> nope. Those were all lies. But still, and amputation and my little pony? Ugh. Business with the farm. So I just kept telling more. So she's not a doctor. Please don't make Granny and the farm suffer for what I did. This whole thing is my fault. That's not entirely true. Maybe if I paid more attention to what you had to say instead of talking all the time, none of this would have happened in the first place. I just need to talk less, listen more, especially to you. <sighs> Thanks, big brother. And whether it's me running Sweet Apple Acres or you, I know it'll be in good hooves. Well, that's nice. You two were talking about. I ain't going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> Running the farm. Not after this display. Not likely. And don't you go getting any ideas about cutting ties with sweet apple acres. Or I'm going right to your green, Peppy. Get me? <laughs> um, yes, ma'am. Now, who here still wants to hear about the apple blight? Now, when I was a filly. <laughs> It's not a story I'm proud of. Oh, I like the I like the sunset in the background. About being honest. I hope you learned something too. Yep. I sure did. I learned that no pony starts. This shows that even Applejack has her flaws sometimes. Make a few mistakes to figure out who you are. Yep. But I think the most important thing I learned is who really runs Sweet Apple Acres. Granny. <laughs> yep. I do not know why, but my camera just cut off again, and yeah, there's not really any need to re to resume the episode because it was at the end, and uh, what what Granny Smith really said at the end. All right, everybody, get back to work after a nice cup of cider, and then the episode just cuts to the credits. So yeah, no need to resume it. it the episode was already mostly done anyway. But, yeah, and uh, what my camera said, I actually got a chance to look at what it said, and it said, please wait for the camera to finish recording. What kind of sense does that make? Like, again, the battery's not dead, the memory card isn't full, it just said, wait for the camera to finish recording, and then just stops by itself. The only reason a camera should finish recording is if it reached its recording time limit, or if you turn it off. But no, it just went off by itself, so... Yeah, I don't know what it's doing, but... Anyway, I didn't have to resume the episode because it was near the end anyway, but... Alright, so that was MLP Season 6, Episode 23, Where the Apple Lies. And I apologize if I didn't really say or do much during the reaction. It's just that I... With, with an Applejack episode, I don't really uh, look forward to Applejack episodes that much because she's not really my most favorite character. I mean, I like her, but uh, not my most favorite out of the main six... But, um, this episode, I gotta say, was, 
it was a good one. Like, it, I don't, I don't know if it was really epic or awesome. Like, I, I like the concept of uh, Applejack being a little younger in this story. Like, she doesn't really have her hat on, and uh, her voice, her voice is a little higher pitched because she's meant to be a little younger. And this just brings me to wonder if, if Big Mac learned that. He shouldn't talk so much over app what app he shouldn't talk so much over what Applejack has to say. Um could that be why he turned into a silent one? Because he felt the need to silence himself more? That's actually pretty depressing when I think about that. I mean, could that be a possibility? Like could that be the reason why Big Mac doesn't talk as much, where he just goes his initial yep or nope. Like because he feels that he needs to listen to people's opinions more. I mean, he can talk. I mean, jeez, like... Just when I think about it, it sounds pretty depressing, but... Yeah, I guess he learned something, but... Um, okay, about this episode. Okay, the beginning... I... I have to say, I didn't mind it. Like, the beginning didn't feel really wrong. Like... The beginning didn't really feel that... Uh, okay, the layout of the be of the beginning didn't really feel entirely wrong to go into the whole nostalgia story that took up most of the episode, like uh, Apple Bloom like lying about something like, yeah, that is a pretty big thing to lie about, like saying like, oh yeah, I, m I made sure to put like the right items in the right crates, like that is a pretty big thing to lie about. Like I was about to say like, really. You're gonna tell Apple Bloom this whole life story just for lying over, like, a slight thing, but... No, that's not really a slight thing. That is a pretty big thing to lie about. So, yeah, because nobody would be that happy to get the wrong item in their crates, so... So, yeah, that is a pretty big thing to lie about, like, in a business, but... So, yeah, yeah, the reason to go into a story was okay. Like, well, it was more than okay. It was good. I mean, it was acceptable. And... And again, I like the concept of, like, us telling the story when Applejack wasn't entirely a filly. She was just kind of a younger teenager. And, um, and yeah, she obviously, uh, promised something to filthy rich and spoiled rich that, you know, that can't be done. Because the tradition of, the tradition of the Apple family is to sell their quality cider on the farm, not anywhere else. Because... Uh, one, it's just out of their tradition, and two, they said that that stuff can go off pretty easily after a while. So they want to, like, put it, they want to keep it fresh, like, they want to, like, get it on sale very fast, like, at their location, and they have to have, like, the citizens of Ponyville actually come to the farm to get the top quality stuff. So, see, I understand why, why that would be, but, y you know... You know, I, I can't really... Oh, okay, um... Yeah, this is a pretty... This is a pretty... This episode is a really good example uh, on how, like, Applejack may be, you know, the the most honest pony, but even she has her flaws sometimes. Like, everybody has their flaws. Like, I, I, I like... Like, to me, this episode was a good example of... was Was a good example that... Like, the main six may seem perfect with their element, but... Nobody's perfect. Everybody has their flaws. So that's what I kind of took from this episode. But, um, I, I, I just, I just really enjoyed the storyline for this episode. Even though I don't really necessarily enjoy Applejack episodes that much, I did like the story for this. It didn't feel boring like, like, like Applejack's Day Off. That episode was just so boring. But, um, th this was actually a bit, this was actually better. Like, like, it was also awesome to see Big Mac talking more again. And it, it was cool to see more interaction with Filthy Rich and Spoiled Rich or Spoiled Milk or whatever. Um, and um, I was wondering why Filthy Rich seemed so nice. Like, I thought he was going to be just like a Spoiled Rich, like all kind of snooty and kind of rich and kind of, you know, yeah, like, kind of like Diamond Tiara was, but... I guess, I don't know if this is true, but I guess ever since Diamond Tiara changed during the Crusaders of the Lost Mark episode, um, her dad kind of changed as well, or maybe her dad was always like that, I don't know. But, I don't know, it just seemed, uh, kind of odd to me to see Filthy Rich being this friendly, like, considering the kind of character he is. But, 
But yeah, uh, Applejack uh, sets up a pretty big deal with him that she knows she can't do. And she ends up going into a bunch of lies about it. And then, of course, uh, Filthy Rich thinking that she's agreeing with this whole deal thing. Uh, he puts together this whole work, all of this work, this whole display, only to find out that it won't be happening. And of course, like, I would get mad too. Like, if I went through all this work just to find out something is not going to happen for it, I would be pretty pissed off as well. But, um, so yeah. Then, of course, Applejack goes into this whole lie because, uh, Granny Smith is sick. That's right. And then it all goes into spiral, like, it all spirals into Applejack saying she has this very contagious disease that doesn't even exist in Ponyville. And then there's a whole scene at the hospital and... Okay, about the big saw, like, is that a surgical saw? Like, uh, like... I know, I know, it's, a, I know My Little Pony is trying to go for some more dramatic storylines, but, really? Like, that, that, that moment just made me really say, really? Amputation in My Little Pony. Or, maybe it was an amputation, maybe I misheard it, but, yeah, just, I mean, why would you shave something with a saw, just use a shaver or something, but, if that was a surgical saw, like, really? Surgical amputation and MLP, just... No. But, um... <clears throat> yeah, really... <laughs> it's silly and obvious, but... The two things I really took from this episode is... Lying never solves anything, and... Don't ever lie, because it can get you into... Into some serious deep shit. And... And, um, you know, not ev not everybody's perfect. They all have their flaws. You know, they've, they've all made mistakes as, you know, kids or teenagers or even now. Even adults make mistakes. Like, nobody's perfect. Everybody has their flaws. And that that just goes to show that that's what uh, Apple Bloom really learned from that story. Like, she's, at the end, she's like, Wow, I can't believe you told such a big lie like that, Applejack. So, so yeah... I liked how this episode had a storyline where it didn't feel boring or really repetitive or reused, but it felt good. It, it feels calm and mellow to watch. Like again, I I, I like the atmosphere. I like the atmosphere of uh, Big Mac and Al Applejack being a little younger, like to show that what they've learned at that time. And I did enjoy the interaction between them. Like it shows that yeah, it's common for siblings to fight over these kind of things and. Well, they learned that's just where they got, that's just where that got them. But, um, and Grady Smith was actually pretty entertaining to watch in this episode as well. Like, um, okay, I'm just going all over the place here. Um, yeah, just, there's not really much to say about this episode. I mean, I've already gone over what I took from this episode. I I did like how the how the characters were portrayed in this episode. I did like the selection of characters. And uh yeah, just I I did like this episode. I you know, honestly, really looking back on it, like judging how this episode wasn't really as bad and boring as I thought it would be, I would honestly give this episode you know, about an 8 or 9 out of 10. Like, I, I just think it's that good and enjoyable. Like, I, I, I like the storylines, I like the atmosphere, and... Yeah, just like the two lessons. Like, everybody has their flaws, and, you know, just don't ever lie. It never solves anything. <sighs> and again, with that theory, is, is that why Big Mac has gone silent? Because if, if he gets it in his head that... If he talks, then it interrupts people immediately. Like, the world isn't like that. I mean, learn to calm down, but... Is that why Big Mac has gone silent most of the time? And really, the reason why he only opened up about his feelings was... During the Brotherhood Social episode back in Season 5. You know, it, it really does make me feel for Big Mac a lot more. To see him be this up big and silent guy, but, you know, whenever he's touched in the type of hard strings like he was back in the Brotherhood Social episode, then he opens up about his feelings and he goes on to this whole paragraph speech. But, it's just a theory, like, that may have not been true, but it just gets me thinking. And it's pretty depressing, but, and it's just my theory on as to why Big Mac is silent, and maybe he did talk a little more before this event. I'm just saying, like, 
I wonder if anybody else is going to make that theory during a reaction or something. I don't know, I'll just have to see later. But is there really anything else to say about this episode? Again, this review felt pretty short, but like I said, I'm not going to beat myself up so much for that. And and yeah, I, as I may have said this before, just... <laughs> okay, take it easy, table. Um, at, like, I said this before, but I'll just say it one more time. Um, if, if you don't want to watch a reaction where I'm, like, for half of the reaction, just staring at it, just trying to focus on the story and not really saying anything and just making either shocked or kind of eager face, facial expressions like this, you don't have to watch the reaction. You can just skip to the thoughts. Like, somebody actually left a comment on my previous reaction to the finale saying, you know, I actually come to a lot of your videos just for the thoughts because... I think he said mainly my reactions are just mostly funny instead of really, you know, observant. Like, like I am more observant, so I don't really fully get that, but... Yeah, just whatever you want to do, like, you, you entirely have that right. And like I, just, like I said, everybody has that right. So, yeah, just... Is there anything else to say about this? Not really, but I, I did like this episode. I really enjoyed it. <sighs> okay. Alright, so that was my reaction to uh, MLP Season 6, Episode 23, Where the Apple Lies. And we saw where the apples did lie sometimes in this episode, so... Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction review. Please don't forget to subscribe only if you sincerely enjoy the content on my channel. Not just because I asked you to. And, as always, I will see you guys in the next video that I do. Bro hoofs to everybody watching, and I will see you next time.